What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. Today's video discussion is going to be on Save a Dive Kits. Now we actually shot this video about two years ago and uploaded it, but this is going to kind of be an upgraded or an updated version. And this video also comes by special request by one of our viewers. And basically he wanted to know if we could give some recommendations on what good items would go into a Save a Dive Kit and why we felt that were going to important or very important. So we're going to do a two part. We're going to show you those items and then I'm also going to show you an updated version to my save a dive kits and why i choose to use what i do now when we think about save a dive kits they need to be simple that's what they're there for they're not meant to rebuild regulators to fix tanks they're meant to save a dive so in the pinch if you say you've left your octo holder at home you got a spare clip maybe you got a hose that's a little loose you got a couple different wrenches to work on so that's what we're going to do we're going to take the bare necessities what we would recommend you having and then show you how to build a kit now, there's several companies like Trident, Innovative Scuba. They come out with these save -a dive kits like these here. It comes with about six or seven different items. And they're really neat. Spare mouthpiece, couple of extra O-rings, fin strap, mast straps, you know, zip ties. They work really well, but the container itself is not good. So if you're going to get something like this, and you can get the next size up, and it actually comes with a lot more stuff, but pop the lid off. Take a mass box that you don't use, dump everything into the mass box, and make that the container for your save -a dive kit. It's real cheap, inexpensive, and it really does have the bare necessities that I would want. O-ring, zip tie, stuff like that. But if I'm going to build a kit and I want it to be a little bit more useful to me, the first thing I'm going to look at is tools. I'm going to think about what can I do. Now, bear in mind, I am a service technician for several different gear manufacturers, but let's say that I wasn't. I'm just your average diver out there, and I have a malfunction in my gear, maybe a, a leaky hose, maybe a port plug that's went bad, the O-ring on it, maybe just an O-ring bad on my tank, maybe a regulator needs to be slightly adjusted. You know, not a complete overhaul, but just slightly adjusted whatnot. I want to think about tools. Now, there's three tools that I carry with me that I really like and I would suggest for you. One is a small set a very thin wrenches here, like these Trident ones. And what I like about it, it's actually six different wrenches. They come in different sizes, depending on which end of the wrench you're going to use. They're stainless steel. Now, we all know stainless steel can still rust. I'm going to show you that a little bit later. But stainless steel is going to be a little bit better than any other type of metal out there as far as this is concerned. So, But I do like the thinness of these because they're really easy to get in between the first stage and say a hose protector if you can't move it for whatnot to release a hose. So those work good. You can change out a hose with them. Uh, it's just they're easy to store. Bumping up a little bit more. Of course, these are all in imperial sizes. If you need metric sizes, you can go with a little multi-tool like this that has the metric and the imperial wrenches as well. It's got several different other tools, O-ring picks, uh, Allen heads for inserts, stuff like that, or port plugs. You can get them out. Once again, it's stainless steel as well. So I'd really recommend those wrenches, this multi-tool, and definitely this multi-tool. Now, the really cool thing about this XS Scuba one is designed for a tank. It's got several different Allen heads for regulators. It's got an O-ring pick back here. It's even got a slotted screwdriver which is for the turn knob on a tank the on and off knob so that you can get in there and service it or check for leaks stuff like that so i'd really suggest this multi-tool this multi-tool and a set of small wrenches they work very very well they don't take up hardly any space i could actually you now if you take them out of the package i could put them all in my pocket if i needed to they fit perfect into a, a tube container like that or even a mass box whatever you're going to make your save a dive kit they're going to fit nice and secure so i really like those now, the next item, of course, I would always have is a spare mouthpiece. You don't have to have a very expensive one. You can go with a cheap one. Like I said, if you buy the Trident kit or the Innovative Scuba, they're going to come with one in there. Uh, but if you want one to match whatever uh, current mouthpiece you have, get you one to match. Like this liquid skin here, it's a very soft, awesome uh, mouthpiece. Or maybe if you like the moldable one, go ahead and get it, mold it, put it back in the container, and then throw it in your save dive kit. So always have some type of spare mouthpiece. Uh, that way, if you ever bite through yours or whatnot, because they do wear out, guys. They're silicone, they're rubber, you can, you're going to bite through them. Um, of course, o rings, there's several different o ring kits. Um, if you get one of these keychain o ring kits, they're really nice because they will go in your keychain. You'll always have one in your pocket no matter where you're at. Um, I keep two of these in my truck. I keep one that's for standard air tanks, and I got one for Viton or that carries Viton o rings for Nitrox tanks. Relatively inexpensive. They look really cool, and of course, it doubles as a keychain. Now, I showed you about two weeks ago. If you look on my dive computer here, you'll see o rings on my wrist strap here. Uh, I also put several O rings on my wrist strap and my dive computer. So, no matter what, I always have O rings for the tanks. 
So moving on, of course, we have the clip systems, and there's several different clips. Now, I'm a big bolt snap and double ender fan. fan. So like on my gauges and stuff, I have bolt snaps. All my flashlights have bolt snaps. I use these double enders for my reels and buoys and stuff like that. These are really nice to have a couple of these laying around uh, for different accessories. If you want to go a little bit cheaper, you can go with some of these hose uh, holders here. Uh, Trident makes one. I'll, I'll be honest with you, they're fairly cheap. Uh, if you're going to get something like this, go with the Scuba Max or a little bit higher quality than the Trident one. Nothing wrong with them. They just break a little bit easier. But these are great, and I'm going to show you where I use these. I don't personally use these, but I'll show you why I have a bunch of these laying around. Primarily, they're for my students. If I see one of my students swim around, their gauges or their alternates hanging out behind them, being an entanglement hazard, I'll snap one of these onto them and hook them up real quick. So it works really good. It's always good to have a few of these just laying around. Moving on over, of course, fin straps. We all know that we got fin straps on our fins that break from time to time. You need replacements. Once again, if you buy the full kit, they come usually with just one fin strap. But if it was me, I would carry two fin straps. You got two fins, you want to be able to fix them both. Now, I use either the bungee or the spring strap. So I have just a spare set of spring straps here that I throw in mine. But whatever fin straps you use, they're definitely going to be good, good to go. Get you two of them because you got two fins. Moving on to the mast strap. Once again, if you get the, the kit itself, it comes with a mast strap. I don't actually carry a spare mast strap. I carry a full-fledged new whole spare mask. So I have several masks laying around. I just throw an extra one in my kit. The reason I do that, and let me explain a little bit about it. If you've never had to replace a mask strap, sometimes they can be a pain in the butt, even in a controlled environment. And it's a lot easier if my mask strap breaks, put it back in the box, get out a brand new mask, put it on and go diving. I don't want to sit there and get rocked and rolled on that boat in the heavy ways trying to replace a mast strap, especially with wet fingers trying to thread your mast strap back through these buckles sometimes can be difficult. So I just take me a whole nother mask as a backup for my spare parts kit. So guys, that's kind of my suggestion on what I would carry just as a, a basic spare parts kit. Once again, once you take all this stuff out of the packaging, it is very, very small. Uh, it can fit in a mass box. It can fit in one of these smaller boxes. And I, I'm going to briefly go over what I use each one of these for and show you how I pack them. But once you take all this out, with the exception of the mask, of course, if you use the mass box, it'll fit. But most of these items will fit into a small container. You don't have to have a very big box or container to carry it in. So let me slide all these over. I'm going to pull out my, my personal save a dive kits just to show you an updated version of what I carry and kind of give you an idea of why I do it, especially if I do a lot of travel, which ones I use and the philosophy behind it. So I have three different boxes here, and they are actually pretty much the exact same Save-A-Dive kit except for this little guy. This little guy is what I fly with. This goes in my checked luggage, and of course I'll, I can put several different tools. I can put the multi-tools down in here. I can put a, a ton of O-rings in here. I can fold up a mast strap or fold up a uh, fin strap, something like that when I travel, and this works good. There's hardly any weight, even with those tools in there, it doesn't take up much weight. And, of course, I can put it in my check luggage and always have me a small save-a-dive kit no matter where I go. Uh, it kind of doubles as a cell phone protector. I can throw my cell phone in it, and it's going to keep it, uh, you know, waterproof when it's on the boat. But it also is great if you're in a remote area. you got to do a lot of hiking to get to your dive site. This is great. Throw the bare essentials in it. Throw it in your cargo pocket of your shorts or your pants, and go diving, guys. This, this is a great little system here. So I really like the Pelican-style boxes. Works great for me. The next two boxes are actually identical other than size. I carry the exact same items in both box depending on where I'm at. Usually this box here is, it stays at the shop. If I have students out on the boat, this is the box that goes with me. So I'm not actually going to show you the container or the components of it inside because it's the exact same as this bottom box. On this bottom box, this is the one that stays in my truck. Now, it doesn't matter where I go, if I got my truck with me, I have this save-a-dive kit. When I get on boats, I have this kit. When I'm at the quarries, I have this kit. When I go ice diving or something up north, I have this kit. The only time I don't take this kit with me, of course, is when I fly, I take the smaller kit. So I have one that stays here. That way I have a spare. I have a, that's funny, a spare parts kit for my spare parts kit. But this is my primary, the one I go everywhere with. And let me talk a little bit. I'll give you a little secret of why I do that. If you take... Pay close attention to this box here. You'll notice that the handle is broke. So this is my spare to my spare parts. The handle is still good here. That's why I carry this one with me. I always have a handle. So 
I'm going to open it up, briefly go over what's in it, show you how I pack it, and then, of course, like I said, it'll reinforce the value of some of these items that I talked about. So, open it up. You'll notice it's just a waterproof dry case here. It gives me plenty of room, and I have this thing packed nice and neat, but even if it wasn't, all the items would still fit in here. So, as I open it up, the first thing you're going to notice, I have a rescue mask. Okay, CPR purposes, we all know what they're for. And, of course, down in the bottom, I also have a waterproof first aid kit okay it's got a set of emt shears about five or six pairs of gloves neosporin band-aids uh some type of cold wrap it's got ace bandage it's got everything i need to take care of uh emergency first aid or whatnot there on the boat or anything like that so that's kind of my go-to emergency situation kit of course here i have several glow sticks we all know what they're for use them for night diving marking lines for navigation i keep a set of those i think there's about 10 in here and i really like these bracelet ones they're really easy to snap onto a tank valve or a first aid or something like that. So that, those are the ones I use. Of course, I also have a uh, scuba diver's best friend, zip ties. It'll attach anything, dive knives, anything that you need to attach. They're great. And I keep probably 20 or 30 of them in there. And then everything else that's in the kit is in a bag sealed. And the reason I do that, even though the box is waterproof, guys, if you spend enough time around the water on a boat or anything like that, Waterproof is not waterproof. Water's still going to get in. You're going to have your box open, be using an item out of it. A wave's going to splash and water's going to go in it. So I still put each item in a bag just for that. Maybe I need to take it out and just take a certain part of it with me. So I do that as well. So looking at each of these bags, the first one that you're going to hear is all metal parts. This is for my back plate and wings. These are spare parts for them. Extra tri-glides, extra D-rings, extra bolts for, uh, you know, back plates to... Um, single tank adapter stuff like that i've got a spare dive knife and if you look close right here you're going to see an ex a watch extension i actually use this guy more times than i can count this is a um, extension strap for my dive computers both of my wrist dive computers that i wear so that when i put on a dry suit it extends the band of my watch strap or my dive computer strap so that i can go around the cuff of my dry suit so i really like that there but this is kind of my my spare parts kit for all my back plate and wings that i dive with Moving on, this is kind of my go-to goodie bag. And what I mean by goodie bag, it's got just some parts that I may or my, may not ever use, but they're really good to have. A couple extra mouthpieces, snorkel strap, or snorkel keeper. I don't wear snorkel. Snorkel keepers are actually really good for alternate holders, so that's why I got it there. Um, I got a scuba tip of the week. If you go back to our playlist to the scuba tip of the week, I'll show you how to make that into an alternate holder. Of course, I got a spare whistle here in the bottom. I've also got some Dramamine for seasickness uh, purposes, graphite pencil so I can ride underwater on slates. This is a little ascent alarm here. This is really neat. If you don't dive with a dive computer, I'd highly suggest you get one of these ascent alarms. They actually go onto your mast strap. They thread onto it sit right up against your ear and if you come up faster than a foot every two seconds that thing's going to beep and annoy the crap out of you telling you to slow down so it's a really good ascent alarm to let you know that you're coming up too fast i got some cave line here uh, if you ever have a reel that breaks maybe it's a, a crank wheel or a reel or maybe it's just a spool that breaks don't throw your line away guys it's multi-purpose you can use it for about anything what i use them for a lot of time is to tie on boat snaps and, or bolt snaps and stuff to regulator hose like i'm a long hose here um you can also use it for flashlights spare flashlights you can tie on bolt snaps and stuff like that with it so don't ever throw your cave line away because it's definitely got multi-purpose there moving on of course i've got batteries of course these are for some of the flashlights i've got and i've also got a couple of extra uh, computer batteries in there for my dive computers so it's really nice to have now one thing about the batteries when i fly and i go on tropical vacations and tropical dive sites i don't take batteries i just buy them when i get to the site use them toss them get back on the plane come home but around here i have spare batteries and i usually just do the sizes that i need so whatever my my flashlights take and my computer takes that's what i do this is my clip bag. Now, my clip bag is primarily not for me. This is for all my students. And as an instructor, I use this bag all day long. I got a couple extra bolt snaps in there. Um, I've got some suicide clips or, you know, basic carabiners. I've got several of those other clips that I showed you, those hose clips here. Uh, and these are the ones that if I see a student fixing and get in the water and they don't have a way to hook up their alternate or their gauges, I pull a clip out, hook it on their BC, and clip it up because I do not like seeing those entanglement hazards out there. So I have a bag full of these clips primarily for my, my students. 
And then of course I come over here to my tool kit. Now I showed you what tools that I carry. I keep everything in this little bag. Now it's gonna look like it's a lot of dirt in here. It's not dirt. One thing that I do to help combat rust is I put all my tools into a bag and I'll take some type of lubricant. Now I, I'm a big gun nut, so I'll just use gun oil, spray me a couple little squirts of rim oil or whatever um, gun oil I have there at the house or whatnot or here at the shop. I'll spray it in there to keep these tools good and lubricated. Now earlier in the video, I talked about stainless steel. Stainless steel can still rust. If anybody tells you that it can't, they are lying through their teeth. Because as I start to pull these tools out, you're gonna clearly see that these tools have been through the ringer and they have a little bit of rust on there. Imagine that. If you dive in the salt water a lot or anytime you're around uh, water, metal and water do not go together. So even stainless steel can rust. But once again, I like these wrenches. It comes in six different sizes. They're very lightweight. I can take them when I travel if I need to, and they're thin, so they're very easy to get between a first stage, a hose, a hose protector, something like that. So I have those. Uh, talked a little bit about the multi-tool itself. So here's my multi-tool, a couple different wrenches in there. Uh, I believe all them are Imperial. All these are metric, so I have just about every size I need. Uh, port plug Allen head there. Um, got an O-ring pick here. So it's just about every tool that I'll need to save a dive. Of course, I got the tank valve tool in there. I also have an adjustable wrench for any size that I don't have a wrench for. Got a little baby adjustable wrench there. Of course, I have several things of silicone. Got some O2 lube and standard silicone there. Let's see, what else is down in here? And then I got a couple extra O-rings and then I have this little guy. This little guy right here is awesome. It's very, very expensive, but it's awesome. This is my current O-ring kit, and I've, I've got another one down in here. It's got a lot more of the same O-rings, but this little tube right here is Crystal Lube, and if you know anything about Crystal Lube, that's what makes it so expensive. Um, I could shoot a whole nother video on my honest opinion on Crystal Lube, but this is what I use if I'm servicing a reg on the spur of the moment for somebody. And, and you know, as dive professionals, as technicians, we have to use Crystal Lube. So I take this little tiny tube, expensive tube, of Crystal Lube with me everywhere I go. When I run out, I pop the top off, refill it from another one, and then put it back in my kit. But this right here saves me a lot if I have to service a reg on the spot. So guys, that is my save a dive kit. That's my tool kit. It's the components that I put in my save a dive kit. And of course, it's the items that I would strongly recommend somebody looking into. If you have any questions on this, please put it down in the comment section below. If you have a comment or a concern, please put it down there. I would really like to know what you guys use as your save a dive kit and what tools that you carry. Guys, I've been going on 29 years now in the dive industry, and I've learned something every single day that I've been here. So please let me learn from you. Show me what you use. Do a video response to this. Show me your save a dive kit and what you use. Guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.